Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Stahl. Welcome to the program. I'm Pastor Meyer Stahl, the pastor of the Southern New Mexico Church of God, bringing you the program, What is Truth? And now, if you'd like to look at my past shows, all you need to do is go to YouTube and just type in, What is Truth? with Meyer Stahl. And uh, we, you can see any number of programs, different titles, pick the one that you're interested in and check it out. And if you have any questions, you can also call us at area code 575-650-7359. Now, before we get started, I want to offer you two very important booklets. The first booklet is, Why Do You Observe Sunday? Well, most people say, well, my parents kept Sunday, my grandparents kept Sunday, I can remember keeping Sunday as long as I've been around, and, uh, but why? It says here that the Bible teaches the observance of the Sabbath. Now, you could look from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation 22, and you won't find the word Sunday in the Bible. It's not there. So, the question again is, why do you observe Sunday? And the second booklet is, what kind of faith is required for salvation? And at the bottom of the booklet, it says, do you know millions who actually believe in Jesus Christ have no salvation at all because they trust in the wrong kind of faith? Well, what is the right kind? All you need to do is call us at area code 575-650-7359. We'll send them out immediately to you. And uh, there's no cost, there's no obligation. We never ask the public for money. And uh, we're happy to send them out. If you have a question, call up the same phone number and ask a question. Well, let's get to the topic today. The topic today is what is the gospel of the kingdom. Suppose you're walking, uh, you just got out of your car and you're walking over to the church, you're carrying your Bible in your hand and somebody uh, confronts you and they say, listen, would you answer me a question? And you say, well, sure, what's the question? And the person would say, well, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world for a witness. Can you tell me what the gospel of the kingdom is? You might say, well, I don't know. You might say any number of things. You might say what most people say, well, the gospel of the kingdom is Jesus Christ came down to this earth as a human being. He lived a life and then he was crucified for our sins. He died for your sins. He died for my sins. He went back up to heaven and he sits at the right hand of heaven. That's the gospel of the kingdom. And that's what some people would say. Most people would say that. And that's half true. That's one half true. Actually, it is true. He did die. 
He, he died for your sins and for my sins so that we might be justified and that we might have the opportunity for eternal life. But there's more to it than that. So let's go to Matthew chapter 24 and we'll look at verse 3. And it says here in verse 3, it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming, coming back, and the end of the world? This word world is the word aeon. It means age. What is the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors or reports of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So he's explaining what's going to happen before the end. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. People are going to leave the churches. They're going to quit. But he who shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Are you saved now? Well, yes, as long as you keep enduring unto the end, you will be saved. And verse 14 is an important verse. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness, not to convert everybody, but just for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. We're stopping there. Now, what is the gospel of the kingdom? It's very simple. Of course, Jesus Christ came the first time and died for your sins and my sins, but he's coming a second time. The second time he's coming, he's coming to rule this earth. Now, what is the word gospel? What does that mean? The word gospel means good news. And the word kingdom, what is a kingdom? Well, a kingdom or any kingdom must have four parts. Would you agree with me that a kingdom must have a king over it? Would you agree? Certainly. Would you agree with me, point two, that a kingdom must have people in it, subjects in it, that the king rules over? Would you agree with that? Point number three, would you also agree that a kingdom must have a territory? King of France, king of Spain, king of uh, England, it must have a territory. Now, the fourth thing I always hesitate when I present the fourth thing, giving a chance uh, for you to answer what the fourth part of a kingdom is. You know it. I'll give you a hint. Any kingdom must is a government, a form of government, and it must have what? 
laws. It must have laws. So the king rules by laws. So we're going to look first in the uh, Old Testament. We're going to look at Isaiah chapter 2. And it says here, verse 2, And it shall come to pass in the last days. These are days that have not yet happened yet. They're going to come soon. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. This is symbolism that is explained. And it says here, and many people shall go and say, come you and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion, this is Mount Zion. Where's Mount Zion at? In Jerusalem. Shall go forth the law. And now this word law is the word Torah. What is the Torah? The Torah is found, it's the laws that are found in the first five books of Moses. We, they're called the Torah. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So he's going to rule from Jerusalem on Mount Zion where the temple, both temples stood. There's going to be a third temple up there. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. These are implements of farming, farming implements. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. The war colleges are going to close. There's going to be no more war. And now we'll go on to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Does that sound familiar to you? That's always said around Christmas time. For unto us a child is born Unto us a son is given, and the government, what form of government? The kingdom form of government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. He was the mighty God of the Old Testament that the Israelites, that Abraham and the Israelites all dealt with, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He's the Prince of Peace. He's coming to bring peace on this earth. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So we're stopping here, and we're going to recap, do a little recapping. The gospel of the kingdom is simple, it's easy. Jesus Christ died for your sins and for my sins, and he's now at the right hand of God up in heaven, and he's coming back to bring back his kingdom. Now, when we come back, we're going to find out how long he is going to rule. So please don't go away. We'll be right back after this short break. Hi. 
Hi, I'm Ray Bamberg with Here on Earth. I would like to invite you for a free hearing evaluation to our office. We've been here in Southern New Mexico for 34 years helping people hear better. Hey, don't touch that dial, because you're watching the only independent TV station here in Las Cruces, the Las Cruces Channel. Keep watching. Call Mark Goldstein, the safe money guy, at 575-556-2472 to learn about innovative strategies now available to help you grow, protect, and preserve your money and financial future, regardless of market conditions. There you go. So great, you can do all these different things. Here, do the plan. Okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> guys, not all. Welcome back to the program. In case you tuned in late, our topic today is what is the gospel of the kingdom? Now you can watch all of our old shows that we've done. We have hundreds of them on the YouTube channel. All you need to do is type in what is truth with Meyer Stahl and you could watch any number of topics that we've done in the past. So our topic today, again, is what is the gospel of the kingdom? And we're going to Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. And uh, there were six angels that were sounding trumpets, and each trumpet blast was an important part of God's plan. But this seventh trumpet, the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms, that's the governments of this world, are become the kingdoms or the governments of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Jesus Christ is going to reign forever and ever. Now we're going to uh, look at Revelation chapter 20, and we're going to understand what was the first part of his reign here. And uh, it says here, verse 20, verse 1, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now let's understand this. Satan's out of the way. He can't cause any more problems. He's locked up for one thousand years. What happens during this one thousand years? Let's read it. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. Now, we'll stop there. Why would you release Satan once you have him locked up? Well, the real reason is God is not done with him yet. God's going to use him one more time. Now, let's, let's read on here. And I saw thrones, 
and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. You might just lose your head witnessing for Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. They're going to live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Where at? In heaven or here on earth? Where, where are they going to reign? With Jesus. And we're going to see that in a moment here. So that's Revelation 5, verse 10 and has made us kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. We're gonna reign right here on the earth with Jesus Christ. And that's the way it's going to happen. We're gonna reign with Jesus Christ right here on the earth. Uh, let's go now to Jude. It's only one chapter in Jude. And uh, we're looking at verse 14. Verse 14 says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of their hard speeches which ungodly sins sinners have spoken against him against jesus these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts and their own mouths, speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the Spirit. They don't have the Spirit. They don't have the Spirit of God. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus unto eternal life. That's the goal. The goal is eternal life. We're going to have eternal life, and we're going to rule with Jesus Christ for a thousand years. We're going to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, and we'll start in verse 1. And this is in, this is in your Bible. And uh, there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, 
a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. This is the last government going to appear on this earth. It's a, it's a government of ten nations, and they're going to, uh, the ten horns represents ten nations. And this is symbolism, but it's not too difficult to understand once you understand what's going on here. And his tail, that's the tail of the beast, drew the third part of the stars of heaven. These were the angels of heaven. These were the angels and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her son as soon it was as it was born. And that was Herod ready to kill the uh, Christ child. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Right here, he's going to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child, just Jesus Christ, was caught up to God and his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's three and a half years. We'll stop right there. Folks, this is the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus Christ is coming back to rule. Will you be ready for him to return? He's going to return. Will you be ready? And that's what we need to be. We need to be ready for his return because there's only going to be ten thousands of saints that he's going to bring with him. Are you going to be one of those saints? Well, we have these two very important booklets. Why don't you send away for them? Why do you observe Sunday? And the second booklet is what kind of faith is required for salvation? Our phone number is 575-650-7359. Until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth? with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.